this is Roger's running bobtail. Wall to wall and tree top tall. I'm about to hammer down on a bear trap. You copy? Sure is burning rubber. Welcome to the semi-final of Scrap Heap Challenge, the show that makes two teams build colossal machines out of this mangled and entangled scrap. And this week's challenge is no exception, as our teams must construct monster-sized machines capable of monstrous speeds as we test them drag style. Each vehicle must weigh in excess of 5.5 tonnes, the equivalent of an African elephant. In addition, they must measure at least 5 metres in length. But these massive machines will need to be fast as we test them for raw speed along this quarter-mile sprint course. And returning to the heat for this heavyweight semi-final are the powerlifters. Mark, Dave and Captain Neil fix forklifts for a living, but in their spare time, dabble in a bit of two-wheel drag. This tinkering trio has already sailed through underwater cars and hit the jackpot in pinball on ice. But can they rise above their next opponents? The Big Dippers are a team who thrive on thrills as they maintain the biggest roller coaster in Europe. Steve, Brian, and Captain Dodgy hit the bullseye in sharpshooters and had an amazing fling to win caber tosses. But have they got what it takes to do the big one and reach the scrappy final? OK, teams, your semi-final challenge has been set and you have just ten hours to build your super heavy, super fast monster drag machines. Oh, yes. Go on the sound of the gong. Wait for it, team. Wait for it. Go! <laughs> that sounds a bit of a challenge, really. That is a big challenge, that, isn't it? We've got these uh, measurements we've got to think about, which is the uh, five and a half ton business. We're going to have to go onto the yard and get a big truck. Yeah, that'd be a diesel, probably with a turbocharger on it. We're going to worry about streamlining this because that's all sort of weight anyway, no. so it's not worth it. Yeah. What do you reckon about size, Brian? The bigger the better, I think. Yeah? Yeah. To ease the sheer scale of this task, we've recruited two formidable experts. For the powerlifters, we brought back a scrap heap winning expert. He runs his own engineering firm and with 30 years experience as a mechanical engineer will bring the lifters quickly down to earth. It's Steve Matthews. All right, lads, I'm Steve, your expert. Any ideas so far? Well, we just want to go to a four-wheel truck, we think. What is your thoughts? I think truck's too low a ratio, so, yeah. so what's got a higher ratio axle we can use? So you're talking about like a 4x4 vehicle or something like that? Like a normal road vehicle? Kind of vehicle. No, it's got to be heavy trucks. Why not use a coach chassis? Low chassis? What we want. What engine are we going to use? We want oh We want something big. Yeah, something really big. About 400 horsepower, something like that. But I suggest we put a whacking great truck engine <laughs> as close as we can to the axle. The power lifters are following the scrap heap mantra of keeping it simple. The coach chassis will give them a required five metre length. But a coach engine is unlikely to give them the grunt they need. So they want a big, meaty motor to act as their power pack. A simple theory, but transferring the power to the wheels of the coach could be tricky. Go wrong, and they'll be left on the starting grid. What sort of speed are we hoping to get? You're probably looking about 70. Yeah, I'm hoping for 70. I'm hoping for 60 plus, anyway. Yeah. For the Big Dippers, we've enlisted a truck mechanic who has diesel running through his veins. Specialising in heavy goods vehicles, he should have no problems in handling this larger-than-life team. It's Andy Brooks. Hi, Andy. Andy. I'm, I'm yeah. Dodgy. Brian. Brian. Steve. Andy. Andy. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Right, it's going to be a toughie, but uh, I think we can do it. Five and a half ton uh, weight, so we're looking big. We're looking on the lines of perhaps two engines. Which two are engines? Two engines together. The original engine there. 
and bolts some sort of a shaft to join the, the other onto engine. the crank. Onto the crank, yeah, so yeah. the two cranks are linked. The Big Dippers plan to find an operational vehicle of the required weight and length. They'll then increase its power by coupling a second engine to its original motor. But any donor vehicle they find will have been designed to house just one engine. Getting a second motor to fit could cause massive headaches. And obviously you're going to drive this vehicle, yeah? Hopefully, yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Andy, I think we'll do a list. Yes. This is obviously one of the biggest challenges uh, that's been set. A large truck engine, yeah. With a turbocharger, diesel engine, the whole chassis with the engine. Let's get out there before the other team get out there. Where you go, bring me some b good bits. It's in a while. They're off. They're keen, they are keen. There's a place in the final awaiting the team who builds the fastest monster drag machine. And finding the parts for such a colossal build is going to be key. So which set of scavengers will be in and amongst the gigantic junk first? Our two teams are about to embark on one of the biggest and heaviest scavengers in scrap heap history as they attempt to build monster drag machines. And it's Dave from Essex-based powerlifters who has run straight to what he thinks could be the low traction chassis which will give them the speedy takeoff they need, a massive 10-ton coach. The powerlifters are hoping to build their monster drag machine using a low traction coach chassis and by plonking a huge power pack on top. The engine gives them the grunt they require and the low traction chassis provides them with a speedy takeoff. Yes. The, flywheel. the powerlifters' opponents are the Big Dippers, a team of roller coaster repairmen from Blackpool. Despite flying onto the heap first, scavengers Steve and Brian can't seem to spot a suitable truck for their build. Anything, Brian? No. The Dippers are attempting to build a dual-engine drag machine by coupling one engine to another. Having found a coach, the powerlifters' scavengers, Mark and Dave, realise the sheer enormity of this challenge and call for backup. Neil, you want to come out and all this coach? Yeah, we can come out to the coach if you like. Captain Neil, with Steve the expert, should provide the extra muscle. Although Neil is more concerned about an engine. Have you found a wagon? Well, I'm looking around. I've seen, seen something with a straight, straight six motor in it. Mark thinks he's spotted an engine and goes to take a closer look. What's this here? But he needs to be quick, as empty handed fairground engineers Brian and Steve are right on his tail. Brian, desperate to get the big dippers off to a good start, doesn't beat around the bush. I stake a claim for the Big Dippers. Yeah, I found a lorry. You've got a good power plant. Looks like we're going to have to fight for this one, Brian. <laughs> yeah, he's bigger than us and all. But powerlifter Mark is not about to back down. We staked a claim, boys. <laughs> when? Just... No, I stood down over there, we found a lorry. <laughs> right, well, we might have to find someone else, Steve. Right, come on, we're going to have a route over there. It's finders keepers on the heap and the Big Dippers realised they were pushing their luck. Something they don't have much of as Captain Dodgy begins to become restless. How's it going? We just had the vehicle, but we beat to it. We've been beat to it. So the sheer scale of this build is immense, and it's the powerlifters who are rising to the occasion. Now having a 10-ton coach and a hefty truck engine to make their low-traction, high-powered drag machine. When there's a big scavenge, these boys have proved they don't hang around. In underwater cars, they out scavenged, out built, just take the whole lot out, just bin it, and eventually out swam the Apache Warriors. In pinball on ice, they really got their skates on. Crazy. Melting those lumbering jacks. Ready, boys? Yeah. <laughs> so as the powerlifters once again put their foot down, do. the big dippers have stalled. It's buried up to... We're not going to get that out, are we? See, it's well stuck in here, this, isn't yeah. it? 
they've spotted a huge 19-tonne flatbed truck, which could provide the foundation for their dual-engine drag machine. But it's swamped down in scrap, making it difficult to assess its capability. Oh, what's that word? Time is ticking away. Brian has little option but to give it a go. It's got to be a proper Merc get this out of here. Even if they do, it could be the wrong vehicle, or worse, undrivable, wasting even more precious build time. I could just give it some stick yeah. backwards and see if it'll come out. Yeah. I'll give it a good... Foot down and keep going. <laughs> it seems to drive in reverse OK. <laughs> Brian! And it has brakes. Bonus. You're two inch from shed. What a driver! <laughs> Struggling to unearth a donor vehicle is nothing new to those thrill seekers from Blackpool. <laughs> in sharpshooters, they found and eventually started a truck. which helped them hit the bullseye against the stage crew. <laughs> and in caber tossers, they had a real struggle unearthing a van. Which later became the caber cannon that fired the Big Dippers straight into this semi-final. Yes! So you reckon this will be all right then, Brian, once you... Yeah. Needs a bit of adjustment to the roof. I think so, yeah. We always seem to get something that's crushed a It's crushed down. Yeah. We <laughs> struggle to see anything where you're going with it, but... <laughs> but it's running all right. It sounds yeah. all right, doesn't it? The engine's all right. Yeah. It's uh, automatic. What, is it an auto truck? Yeah, it's an automatic It's an automatic truck. gearbox. Andy said we, we might be better with a manual. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. we'll find something, a manual box somewhere. This engine will stay in this vehicle As without the gearbox. Yeah. Right. And then the other engine will be mated to the back of this engine. Right. What Andy is saying is the existing automatic gearbox in the truck will not allow them to get the rapid start they need in our Monster Drag Challenge. To overcome the problem, they plan to remove the automatic gearbox and couple a second engine with a manual gearbox to the original motor. If all goes to plan, this will give them extra power and the ability to select gears necessary to make a flying start. We're going to shove that bus out of the way. You're going to shove it. Steady now. And luckily for them, a windscreen is surplus right. to requirements. How much are you worth? I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Which way are you going to go with this now? This heavyweight challenge is also proving difficult for their opponents, the powerlifters, who are still digging out their coach. A vehicle on which they have not yet done the simplest of technical checks. Is there an engine in here? Hey, it's got an engine in, lads. Oh, it's got an engine. We've got oil in it. We've got to lose the body, though. We don't want yeah. the body. Yeah. That's a big job. Let's see if it runs. Oh, sweet. It's a miracle for the powerlifters. Such an old battered vehicle, usually accustomed to ferrying grannies to the seaside, is a runner. But with expert Steve at the helm, something tells me this coach has seen the last of the Blue Rinse Brigade. Oh, out, mate. Flat out. Yeah, cool. Go oh, right. So as both teams start putting their plans into action, what does our judge think of their designs? Right. Matt Summerfield is a mechanical engineer who builds and competes in his very own thousand brake horsepower racing rig, which can get up to an amazing 0 to 100 in less than 10 seconds. As you can tell, the team's very excited to have something massive to do. Yeah, you're telling me. They've got, they've got enough on the plate to do with this job, haven't they? They have, haven't they? Yeah, it's not going to be an easy day. There's a minimum weight, yeah, isn't there? And five and a half five, tons, five yeah. Five and a half tons. And is that the same thing in is, is order, standard yeah. truck racing? Is yeah, that, that's right. There yeah. are rules like that. I mean, from what I can gather, the Big Dippers are going to put two engines linked together, oh. yeah. which will presumably will also naturally shift the weight more to the centre of the vehicle. That's right, yeah. They're using two smaller engines, which are obviously um, uh, a lighter all together and the the power lifters they're using a, a large engine right. and also um, a, a big transmission so all in all i'd say that the, the weight factors are going to be the same i know it's a very early stage and if you've got a favorite yes um and i have to no, on no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah as regards getting the job done yeah uh, i'm gonna have to go with the dippers on, the, on right. this stage yeah 
Even though lacking a second engine, it's the Big Dippers who have impressed our judge. Maybe it's Captain Dodge's leadership style, straight to the point. Instead of taking that vehicle back there, we might as well. If the bottoms are here, we might as well drag the bottoms to here and yeah. just cut the back off here. Cut it off. And then yeah. even if Brian ties the back again to the tree, tree. we'll drag the damn thing off to there. Yeah. Those not in his favour are the power lifters, who are not far behind opponents, the Big Dippers, also opting to strip their vehicle on the heat. Got a sledgehammer, rip all these lockers off. Right. Just hit them across there. Neither donor vehicles are a pretty sight, and both have very fragile elements vital to each of them working. So both our teams are going to have to take a softly, softly approach. Yeah, right. Hey, power lifters, how's it going? It's going well, it's going well. It's just a little bit warm today. It is a bit on the warm yeah, side. Yeah, a bit on the warm side. Do you yeah. not find something bigger? Well, it's the biggest thing we could find, so we thought we'd use it. So now, I can see you're trying to pull as much sort of excess sidage off it as you can. We just want the chassis out of it, take the body completely off. We take this engine out of it, um, shorten the length of the chassis, and then put the engine out of the truck we've got over there. So what kind of speed are you expecting to get out of the engine in there? Oh, I reckon maybe in a quarter mile, maybe about 65, 70 miles an hour. Oh, so really yes. flying. So spirits are high in the powerlifters' camp, having found all the ingredients necessary to build their monster drag machines. But for the dippers, the enormity of this task is hitting home, weighing heavily on Dodgy's mind. It's not a ten-hour build, this is it? Sorry, yeah. yeah. Uh, everything touch and go. You've put us under pressure no, here, haven't you? We'll not be surprised what this is in. I've got faith in you guys. I'm glad you are. <laughs> <laughs> Having confidence is great, but what they don't have is time. So the dippers have divided into pairs, but Steve and Brian, fully aware that they need to find the elusive second engine, have other ideas. We seem to get vehicles on top. Well yeah, on. Brian. Now yeah. seat for five minutes. Let's have two minutes, go on. <laughs> As the big dippers kick back, the powerlifters' progress is taking a turn for the worse. The coach with its body is far too heavy, even for our massive 5.5 ton minimum weight rule. Yeah. Plus, they've got to make room for this huge engine. But getting the body off is not proving straightforward, as expert Steve forever finds new areas on the chassis for Neil to cut. Cut him here, cut him down through there. If you just chop that. Well, no, you might as well chop him up here. He's all got to come off. Ah, oh, you cut him in the wrong place, really. You should have cut him there. You see what I mean? The wheels have got to... Yeah, 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 yeah. So while the lifters are being driven insane, it's the dippers who are losing it. An unwanted flatbed from their truck, that is. They also had a 19-tonne weight problem, but with 10 tonnes of that now a new addition to the heap, the dippers are pulling away from their rivals, the power lifters. Go on. And with gentle coaxing from Dodgy, the dippers captain... Go on, lad! Get it home. They get their chassis back to base. Woo. Claiming first blood in this titanic battle. This is Dodgy, happy with the new slimline truck back at base, tells Steve and Brian, who also have some good news. Andy's brought the truck home, Steve. It looks well. Fantastic. We're only going to be here um, probably about 10, 15 minutes and we'll have this gearbox and engine out. Well done, lads. Keep going. So roller coaster engineers, the Big Dippers, are screaming away with it. Work is beginning on their chassis back at base. And Steve, along with Brian, have got off their backsides to find this seven-litre diesel engine from a rather sad-looking truck. This could be incredibly embarrassing for the powerlifters. They found all the key elements early on in the scavenge but are yet to get anything back to their build area. Mark, working alone, is having a very difficult time trying to get their massive 10-litre engine out. And Captain Neil with Dave, as well as expert Steve, are still hacking away at their coach chassis. Could the 
Big Dipper's get their engine back before the powerlifters have even got their coach chassis. Yeah, but they'd be under the front, are they? The powerlifters have not got to this semi-final by twiddling their thumbs as big things begin to happen with the coach. Oh, here it goes. Oh, hello. Oh, my. Oh. Oh, Jiminy crickets! That was big and impressive. With over four tonnes of excess baggage lost, the coach chassis is now at an ideal weight for their low-traction, high-powered drag machine. So it's ding-ding all aboard as they drive it back to base. Here comes another 42. <laughs> Not even stopping for an impressed dodgy. <laughs> and just as they arrive with their coach chassis, their opponents, the Big Dippers, are at the back of the heap, loading up the last vital piece for their yeah. dual-engine drag machine. 16 dodge, do you copy? Go ahead, Steve. We've got the engine loaded up on the uh, top bag in the trailer, and we're bringing it in now. Copy that, Steve. Well done. No such luck for powerlifter Mark, who's still up to his eyes in engine. But never fear, Dave is here to give Mark a helping hand. Uh, teams, you have five hours remaining. Five hours remaining, team. Thank you. That's it. So having worked well as a team, the Big Dippers now have all the pieces to their massive puzzle. And Andy is particularly pleased with the seven-litre diesel engine. That's spot on. Right. Captain Dodgy, mind you, doesn't take anything for granted. You've got it running then, Steve? Yeah, well, ten minutes. So Funfair engineers, the Big Dippers, are having a whale of a time, having started what promises to be an almighty build. But those forklift fixers, the powerlifters, are going to have to pick it up if they hope to get anywhere near finishing their monster drag machine. <laughs> Our two teams are building two colossal monster drag machines. Fairground engineers, the Big Dippers, are aiming to couple two engines together to make their dual-engined drag machine and having a smashing time doing it. What a driver! <laughs> their opponents, forklift fixers, the powerlifters, are not having such a good time. They're attempting to build a low-traction, high-powered drag machine using this coach chassis. But it's taken them all morning to extract. And the battle to get out their massive engine to act as their power pack is only now coming to an end. Here goes the radiator. Whoa. It's taken Mark, with the help of Dave, over half a day to extract this huge lump. And would you believe it, she's still being stubborn. But after a quick tickle with the gas axe, she's free and gives the whole team a boost in morale. I like that. She's nice. That's going to rip. A team certainly not lacking in that department are the Big Dippers, busy preparing the truck chassis for their huge second engine. Oh, we need that prop off there. Yeah. And as Steve, with expert Andy, measure it up for size, the Big Dippers are working like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. But that's good, that is. That's, you know, that's... Yeah. Once we've got that in there, we can make this up then, can't we? Yeah, that's it. Everything could... relates now yeah, yeah. to get it in, in position, yeah. and getting some measurements yeah. then, into. But in the powerlifters' camp, there's trouble. What should be a huge build has descended into a huge debate. I think that's chuck it on top. Chuck it on top. It's too much work going down. You've got that turbo's going to be in the way for starters. Yeah. I think we've got to sit it on top and tilt that out. Plus all the palaver of trying to get it underneath and trying to lift it up and hold it in place. Too much hassle, might just knock it straight on top. Expert Steve, though, has other ideas of where to stick the engine. It would line up better with the prop underneath. <laughs> you haven't got to worry too much about them spring angles then. A prop shaft is vital in transferring power from the engine to the wheels of a vehicle. What expert Steve wants to do is put the engine underneath the coach chassis. This requires far more work but it would allow the prop shaft to line up to the wheels perfectly horizontally, the ideal result. Due to the work this would entail, Neil and Dave disagree. They want the engine on top, tilting it diagonally towards the wheels. A far riskier proposition, because if they get the line-up wrong, 
It's game over for the powerlifters. Oh. That engine and the whole lot on top of there. Alarmingly, Captain Neil doesn't seem worried about that. He wants the engine on top, but it would move things along if everyone were paying attention. Where are we went, Steve? So run that past me again. Right. Spring hangs up to it. And as Neil breaks his plan down once again, pressure's build time is ticking away. What well, about the wheelbase? Shortening him? Yeah, we're going to shorten the chassis anyway. So we tilt the axle as well, like you say. Mm. I think that's the plan. Yeah. The powerlifters are finally getting into their build, but only after half an hour of agonising talks. Steve backs down, it's engine on top. Let's just hope for their sake Neil knows what he's doing. So as the powerlifters make plans for their power pack, the Big Dippers are ready to make their single-engined truck into a dual-engined drag machine. Yeah, uh, well, it's tilting. Oh, strong. Although dodgy spots are vital flaw in their design. I'd never go in here this. A month of Sundays. No, no! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Stop going go this side, exhaust it way. Exhaust it way here, we're going to have to cut it off. And even with an amputated exhaust, the second engine still won't fit, leaving the team in total disbelief. So, Matt, it's, we're about just a bit more than halfway through the build now, and the, the teams are cracking ahead as best they can. I mean, I think I reckon they need another two weeks, frankly, to, to finish. Yeah, <laughs> you're about <laughs> right there. Yeah, you're not far but off. They're doing the, doing the best they can. I mean, the, I know the Big Dippers have just had a bit of a change in their design. I was suspicious their engine might not fit where they wanted it to go, and it sounds like it hasn't. Yeah, well, he's, he's the, they're just adapting along the way, aren't they, yeah. at the end of the day? What well, thinking, Brian? We're going to cut this side out. Well, my money's still on there. Is it? It is still on there? Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. no, definitely, yeah. He's, even though theirs looks the most Heath Robinson of, of built. I think it probably will when it's finished, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, you know, he's took two, two engines there grafted together and, yeah. and chopping chassis about. Theirs will be the, the, the one I mean, Right. But I think the power lift is, is they've yeah. got the better ingredients. Right. Uh, but unfortunately, I, I don't think they've utilised them in, in the right areas. Right. What are their main problems they've got to deal with? The biggest problem they've got is the mounting power pack that they've got there directly on top of the chassis of, of the build they're doing. You've got the... The output flange on the gearbox, looking at it, probably 18 inches, two foot higher than the axle. For a prop shaft to transfer power from the engine to the wheels effectively, it needs to be as straight as possible. What our judge Matt Summerfield is saying is the power lifters are proposing to put their engine far too high, creating a steep angle for the prop shaft to turn. At a slow speed, the wheels will move, but too fast, and the prop shaft will snap. What we're looking at at the moment is the prospect that they haven't quite fully considered that, maybe. No, they haven't fully considered it, <laughs> and I think it's just going to wear, they think it's going to wear up right later yes. on in the, in the job, like that. Yeah. So agreeing to Neil's idea of putting the engine on top could be a vital mistake. And for expert Steve, the time wasted getting to a potentially catastrophic decision is just too much to bear. It's taking too long. If we'd cut them four bolts... Everything's taking too long at the moment. It's, it's not just this one axle, so no. let's not just say that the axle's causing us the problem. What yeah. I'm worried about is the line-up of the prop. Right. Because of, because of the angle, yeah? Yeah. Right. And the prop shaft on that, when it's sat on top of here, is going to sit, what, roughly about here, this height? Yeah, he's only two inches below here. And, this and look is, where we are. This 20 is somewhere inches like below. 20 inches below. I think now we've gone this far, yeah. we stick with this. Yeah. yeah. Let's get him moved, get a couple of bolts in. Yeah. Just so it looks like. And let's get the engine on that. In light of his better judgment, expert Steve has backed down again. So could Captain Neil be ruining his team's chances of a place in the scrappy final? Oh, Not worried about prop shafts at this stage are the big dippers who have more pressing concerns. Yeah, but all we're doing now is plating that side. Yeah, we're... but if the engine doesn't fit in, this is going to have to come out. We need to try the engine in. Well, well we've got a measurement then. That's neat. You can't we measurement we didn't work before. We physically got to try and get it in. I think the engine will go in with that piece in. So this monster challenge is giving each team huge headaches. But I have faith in the dippers. I mean, they maintain the biggest roller coaster in Europe, for goodness sake. To you, Brian. To me. To you. To me. To you. 
OK. Well, go down, just try him down for a bit, yeah? Yeah. yeah. It looks promising. Whoa, yeah, look. Cross member. How far down go? Can we go down and under it? Oops, a large piece of metal within the chassis is stopping it from going in. But Dodgy has the cure. And bring that to Mary up. Right, give us a grinder. Let's back yeah. it out rapidly. I like, I like it. As both teams struggle to get their heads around this colossal build, Lisa has joined our judge, Matt Summerfield, to have a look at what our semi-finalists are aspiring to. And this truck is really impressive. Where did you get it from? Uh, th we actually built this ourselves. It's um, you know, a bit of a team effort, like, but uh, we built this from the bare chassis rails up. That is really impressive. And how fast can trucks like this go? Um, on the circuit, um, uh, the legal speed, uh, you know, under race conditions is uh, 100 mile an hour. How dangerous is it when you race? Is it you against how many other trucks? Um, in the in the British field, you're looking at a field of uh, 20 trucks. Um, when we're going to Europe, um, it could be as many as 35 trucks on, on the field at the same time, all scrambling not to, to try and get around turn one. It's a real kind of mishmash. Oh, yeah, yeah, did, yeah. did the trucks ever bash into each yeah, other? Yeah, it, it's, it's a non-contact sport, but when everybody's like pushing for that corner, everybody's on the limit, leaving the brake into the last minute, and uh, it, you've only got to uh, lock a wheel or whatever, and, and it's easily done, you know, contact can happen. And, and sometimes it does get a bit nasty. It goes without saying, both our teams are a long way off that. But they're giving it an almighty go. And one team now working like madmen to get their huge engine on are the power lifters. Neil has taken a massive risk putting the engine on top of the coach chassis. And Steve is keen to put Neil's plan to the test. Let's just get it on there. So will the prop shaft fit? Let it go to you. As the two and a half ton beauty makes her way in, the team are on tenterhooks. Whoa. Nah. Fighting with time on a scrap heap challenge this huge is like going 12 rounds with Mike Tyson. A nightmare. Tempers can fray. What are we gaining on one inch? But we need the gas. Why, why have we got to go one inch? Eh? Why have we got to move it? Can we just move forward a bit? Why are we worried about one inch? And if that wasn't bad enough, Teams, your attention, please. I know you're under a lot of pressure, but I'm just here to tell you, you have three hours remaining. Three hours remaining, teams. Thank you. <laughs> three hours? That's We've only got, got three hours, lads. That's still got to go for Neil, Another it's make or break. Minutes. Hang on. Let's calm down. Let's clear this. Hang on. And with very little time left, getting this engine on and aligned to the wheels is vital. If it doesn't, the power lifters can kiss the final goodbye. Steve, why are we worrying about one inch? But expert Steve's doubts are yet again holding up proceedings. And for Captain Neil, the frustration is taking its toll. Neil might be feeling the strain, but just feel for this poor engine. It's been yo-yoing in and out of the Big Dipper's dual-engine drag machine for the past four hours. Did it sound so easy this morning? Down? Yeah, go up. This isn't going down, going home. <laughs> Tell you. No, stick, let's stick it out. Let's cut more off it. And as night draws in, it's now Captain Dodgy who is getting frustrated. Last time! Down a bit! It's got a touch like a gorilla. So after a down. mammoth four hour down. session down. of trying down. to put a square down. object into a rectangular shape, where did it all go wrong for the Big Dippers? Big Dippers, Hi, sorry Lisa. to interrupt you. Hi. Why is it taking so long to get it in? Well, I think we'll hand over to Andy now because it was his idea to have two engines. <laughs> Andy, take it away. Well, basically, um, on this particular lorry, the chassis splays out at the front to allow the engine, because it's on a slant, and the, and the chassis comes back. So it's back basically right. got a bulge in the chassis to put yeah. the engine in, right? And so we were just having difficulties sliding this baby in. Right, what else have you got to do? Um, Extend Just the gear stick. Right. Gear uh, stick. This is a manual box, isn't it? That was yeah. an automatic. Yeah. So yeah. when the cab comes down, we'll have a manual pipe, pipe touch. Up. Yeah. You've got a lot to do. You haven't got much time to do it. No. I'll leave you to get on and best of luck in the semi final. Well done, Big much. Dippers. Okay, Thank you. Thanks. Next door, it's a totally different atmosphere with a power pack now in place. And after a minor fabrication of the prop shaft, 
It looks to be at the perfect angle. A truly remarkable change in fortune, which has lifted the tension in the powerlifters' camp. It's nearly done. It's yeah. nearly done. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. It's all joined. Oh, it's got it's joined together. Yeah. It's going to be open. Yeah, Pop shots in. At the moment, I can see you've got the engine. That looks like it's joined on. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you need to do up the front then with the the steering? And Still the... don't drive it. Yeah, but I mean, have you got oh, yeah. have you got any other connections? You presumably got to connect this. These two are doing the gear. That's what they're working the on the vintage. Me and Dave doing a rear at the moment. So, so you're pretty close, actually. Yeah, he's getting near. I've had to let you get on to the last bit, then. Thank you very much. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> the powerlifters are about to enter the home straight, whilst their opponents, the Big Dippers, are about to get a huge shock. Is that ring stopping it? Even with no. the second engine finally into position, disaster has struck. It's their prop shaft, which doesn't reach the second engine. You're having a laugh. But you never know. Captain Dodgy's technical expertise could see them through. Well, all we can do is keep hitting it. Well, so Matt, we've seen a little bit of a change of fortune, haven't we, with the team? I mean, the, the powerlifters have sort of kind of leapt ahead a bit, haven't they? Definitely, yeah. Un yeah. Unbelievable. It'll be interesting to see what to, you know what the dippers come up with yet. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, they're really up against it, aren't they? They've but really they, they are up against it. Yeah. Um, uh, they should have had the main job finished. Yeah. I can feel myself selecting reverse on that previous <laughs> statement. It's like you know. <laughs> At the start of this huge semi-final build, the powerlifters argued like girls in the playground, but now they're transformed with only the finishing touches left to do on their low-traction, high-powered drag machine. The Big Dippers had the better start to their build, but are yet to harness the power of their dual-engined drag machine. But after a valiant attempt to fit the prop shaft, it becomes clear they're not going to finish. The frustration is too much for Captain Dodgy, who throws in the towel. Teams, your time is up! Yes, teams! Tomorrow is the day well done, one of you oh. will either drive yourselves mad <laughs> or we drive yourselves straight <laughs> into the scrap heap final! Well done, teams! Great well build! Come out of here! Old build! So, well done, well done, well done, well done, well done, we got there. So, tinkering time will never be so fraught, with the Big Dippers still having to finish fitting the prop shaft for their dual engine drag machine. For the powerlifters, it's a different story. Their low-traction, high-powered drag machine did eventually come together. But if the Big Dippers can get their machine running, could they be driving into the final? Our two teams will race their giant drag machines head-to-head -head in a best of three on our sprint course. At stake is a place in this year's final, where they will meet last week's winners, the Beasts of Bodmin. Before our teams go out and race, we've allowed for one hour of tinkering time. A possible saving grace for the Big Dippers, who didn't even get to finish their dual-engine drag machine. With a prop shaft to fit, a radiator to attach, and the all-important paint job to do, will they get their machine ready in time to compete against this? The low-traction drag machine of the powerlifters. So, Matt, it's a little bit tense now, I think, because they're actually here on the start line and we don't know if they're going to work, <laughs> but potentially they're going to work, and they look monstrous. Well, I mean, the dippers had a lot more to do. I, thought, I mean, I noticed that the, the, the powerlifters were painting quite early on in their team. Yeah, time. they got that together on the day, didn't yeah. they? Um, so, like, they were, theirs was more or less finished. The big dippers, is, is they've been uh, rushing now just to get a bit of paint around it, so yeah. they don't uh, look uh, don't, they like don't the look poor relations. Yeah. Like, yeah. Unsurprisingly, the powerlifters are ready to roll, but both teams have a potential problem they need to overcome before they make it to the final. And it's all to do with gears. Basically, the stick's like a bowl of soup. It's like two laps around, you, around the job and then pick yeah. one kind of thing, you know. <laughs> when it comes down to the actual race, is whoever masters that right. is, is going to win the so day. Do you think really. they're pretty equally balanced in terms of the power they can put yeah. on the ground? They're, they're, they're pretty close. If the pair of them keep on going and they've both got the gears and they've both managed to shift up the box, you know, successfully, then uh, it's, I think it's going to be a close call. Yeah. Yeah. Big Dippers, this is it, the big one, literally and metaphorically. Before. Got confidence in your machine? Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll do the business. Two engines are happily synced? Yes. They're running at full power now. Oh. 
I mean, you've seen what the other team have done. Do you still think you're going to win? It's a good machine, but ours is better. Oh, the boys from Blackpool. <laughs> very best of luck for all, Ruth, and I shall see you at the other end. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Doing yeah, are you ready? Yeah. Ready to go? So, purple powerlifters, you've heard them. They're convinced they're going to win. What have you got yeah. to say about that? Well, I think they might dip out oh, a little bit. No chance. Nah, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> 80 mile an hour in this, you know. It's going to be a bit You're scary. Open. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Steve, do, do, how fast do you think it's going to go? I don't know. I want at least to hit 60. At least 60. I want to see 60 out of it, yeah. Good Thank luck, you. see you later. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I mean, I must admit, I'd like to have a go in the powerlifters machine, but just because that, that driving position is so bizarre. Are they still your favourite in terms of... Yeah, they are, yeah. I, I, I switched to them on, on the strength of, um, of how, they, how they performed in the latter half of the build. Yeah. And um, it's, um, if it's on reliability, then, um, it, then I'm with yeah. them all the way, yeah. Definitely. I mean, it does look business, that one, doesn't it? It does look like it, yeah. was, meant to, it was built to go along yeah. quite fast. Yeah. In a kind of ungainly way. Yeah. Like a very fast elephant. <laughs> <laughs> We're seconds from the start. Remember, our teams go head-to-head -head in a classic best-of-three. In the interest of safety, only experts are allowed to drive, leaving our team members to watch nervously from the sidelines. Big Dippers, power lifters, the ground before you quakes and a place in the final awaits. Go on the green light! And they're away! And what a start from the powerlifters. Steve storms into an early lead. The dipper's truck is way off the pace. Andy seems to be struggling to find the right gear. And check out the smoke from their dual engines. Hit the wrong gear. The Dipper's bad luck is good news for the lifters. Steve's opened up a commanding lead as he storms towards the finish. But look at Andy. He's found his gear and shifts into action. It's too late to challenge for this heat, but at least the Dippers know their vehicle can compete. I think that's 1-0 to the power lifters. But then Big Dippers, I mean, your, your truck was going faster yeah. at the end. I mean, considerably fast. Yeah. Yeah. I need to set off in a lower gear. I mean, it's very hard to tell what would have happened if if he'd got all the, all, if he found the gears in the in the super gearbox. As predicted by our judge, heat one was all about gears. Powerlifters expert Steve mastered his transmission and got off the grid smoothly, whilst Andy in the Dippers vehicle got stuck in too high a gear and never recovered from his slow start. So as our monster drag trucks line up for heat two, the pressure is on the big dippers. They must win to stay in contention for a place in the final. And they're still unsure about that gearbox. It's a guess. It's just an absolute guess of where they are. Come on! He's a win! For the glory of the heap! Go on the green light! Here we go. It's all or nothing for the big dippers. But it's the powerlifters who make the best start, and Steve's showing no mercy. It looks like it's all over for the Dippers. Ah! Expert Andy gives it everything, but surely there's too much ground to make up. Hang on, though. Steve's got a problem and slows up. One chance is all the Dippers need. Andy snatches a dramatic victory. And it's one all. Ooh, he's through it. Well done! <laughs> you really dug in and managed to pip them to the post there. Did the machine run much better that time? Yeah, it's just better gear selection, like a better, better gear selection that time. So Andy, it's one apiece, all to play for going into the last round. Absolutely, yeah. Confident you can do it? Uh, if you get the right gear, yeah, I think we can do it, yeah. Heat 2 saw a complete reversal of gearbox fortunes. It was the powerlifter's turn to experience transmission failure. Unable to find a gear, Steve was powerless to prevent Andy and the Dippers steaming past to make it all square in this best of three. I'm desperate now to see the playoff. This is going to be the big one. Yeah, Who's definitely. going to get there? Whoever names that tune on the gearbox, I'd say. <laughs> Name that tune. <laughs> 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 With a place in this year's Scrap Heap Challenge final awaiting today's winner, everything hinges on the third and final heat in our drag sprint course. The stakes couldn't be higher and the tension is telling. 
Absolutely <laughs> shaking. <laughs> Sorry, Monster trucks are go! Ah! Both Steve and Andy find a low gear and get away. And it's the Big Dipper's Andy who takes an early lead. Ah! But Steve's making ground for the powerlifters. It's a disaster for the Dippers. Andy seems to be having more transmission trouble and loses speed. Ah! Steve just needs to keep it steady to put the powerlifters into the final. He's done it, leaving the Big Dippers disappointed. But in the spirit of Scrappy, they're generous in defeat. Hold on, mate. An amazing finale to a colossal challenge. And even though Big Dippers expert Andy got the better start, it was Steve, the powerlifters expert, who held his nerve, and more importantly, the correct gear, to drive them straight into the Scrap Heap Challenge final. Well, teams, on Scrap Heap Challenge, we like things big. And today, we got two of those machines, and they worked brilliantly. So thank you both for a really, really good challenge. The other thing we like on Scrap Heap are big personalities. And in our runners-up today, we've certainly got loads of those. You've been a fantastic team. So Brian, Steve, and especially Dodgy, been a fantastic team. So well done, and commiserations to the Big Dippers! Hey. Hey. But this week, the team that is going through to the final, fantastic job, even with the odd gear going... <laughs> you got through there, well done. Powerlifters, fantastic. You're through to the final, guys. Well done. Well done. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm not coachable over here. <laughs> and whatever you do, don't miss next week, where the beasts of Bodmin will now take on the powerlifter in the final. Only one team will be crowned Scrappy Champion. Be there. It can only get tougher for this year's Scrap Heap finalists as we make grown men crawl for the title of Scrap Heap Champions.